Adrian Rain performed a study on a group of American prisoners in 1997. All the prisoners were charged with murder, but were pleading not guilty by reason of insanity. The aim of Rain's study was to find out if there is a difference in the structure of brain activity between people who have committed murder and those who have not. In particular, Rain looked at the role played by the prefrontal cortex, the corpus callosum, the amygdala, the medial temporal lobe slash hippocampus, and the thalamus in predisposing people towards aggression. Rain also wanted to see if the findings of studies linking brain structure to aggression in animals could be generalised to humans. His sample consisted of 82 participants. 41 were offenders who were pleading not guilty by reason of insanity, and he also had 41 controls. 39 of the NGRIs were men, and 2 of them were women. 23 of them had a history of brain damage, 3 had a history with, of drug abuse, 6 suffered from schizophrenia, 2 with epilepsy, and 7 with other emotional or learning disorders. Rain's control group were matched on age and gender, however none of them had any history of crime or mental illness apart from six of the controls who had schizophrenia. Having said this, Rain didn't pair each participant's results up with their opposite number in the other group. So really this isn't a match pairs design, but more of an independent group's design. All of Rain's experiments took place at the University of California. The experiment consisted of injecting all the participants with a glucose tracer and then they had to perform a continuous performance task for 32 minutes. The task was based around target recognition. Once they had completed the test, they were given a PET scan. Rain implemented controls in his experiment. As all the participants were allowed to practice the control performance task 10 minutes before the glucose tracer was injected. This made sure that all of the participants were equally familiar with the test. He also made sure that none of the participants were on any medication, as this would affect their results. The NGRIs had been kept medication free for two weeks before the PET scan. The image formed by the PET scan was broken down into slices and boxes. This enabled Rain to measure the relative amount of tracer present in all of the different regions. The NGRIs were found to show less activity in the frontal lobe especially the prefrontal cortex, which is associated with rational thinking, self-restraint, and memory. The NGRIs also showed less activity in the parietal lobe, which is associated with abstract thinking, but they showed more activity in the occipital lobe, which is for vision. Taking a look at the subcortical areas, um, the NGRIs showed less activity in the corpus callosum, this is the bridge of nerve fibres which connect the two brain's hemispheres together and this part of the brain is associated with long-term planning. The NGRIs also showed less activity on the left hemisphere of the brain and more on the right side. These results lead back to the second aim of Rain's experiment. Amygdala, hippocampus and thalamus are all areas of the brain which were associated with aggression in animals. So, seeing this result in humans allows animal experiments to be generalised to humans. Rain made a few conclusions relating brain abnormalities in the NGRIs and how they might have translated into violence or antisocial behaviour. The prefrontal deficits might make someone more impulsive and emotional. Deficits in the limbic system might make someone more aggressive. And this was also observed in cats. The amygdala controls urges and desires, whilst the thalamus processes information and the hippocampus processes memory. The deficits found in the corpus callosum might make it harder for the two sides of the brain to communicate towards each other, and this will make it difficult to think through long-term consequences and make decisions. In addition to this, Rain makes a few important notes of caution. So, perhaps most importantly, Rain insists that these results do not show that NGRIs had no free will 
or that they couldn't help themselves when they committed the crimes. Rain also looked into the murders that the NGRIs committed. A lot of them were not necessarily violent murders, so he concludes that it is not possible to link the brain deficits with violence. Keep in mind that Rain does not claim that PET scanning could identify murderers in advance, nor is he claiming that PET scans could help decide whether or not someone is guilty of murder. However, Rain does suggest that if the damage that causes these brain deficits can be prevented, people might be prevented from becoming murderers as they will not develop a murderous disposition. <laughs>